Good morning. What a gloomy old day. Actually, it's not morning, it's 20 past 12. Of course, I'm a bit later today because I was on duty rotor this morning at work with the Bominator and we're pretty much on full winter duties now with all of the cattle in. So I was overdoing my cattle jobs this morning. But there's a job that I've been putting off for a long while and it's to do with trimming these hedges. It's putting the old twos TWOSE hedge trimmer with the emphasis on old on my old tractor also emphasis on old and it's quite an involved process so <laughs> I've probably been putting it off for longer than I should but I thought seeing that I've, I've had to work today anyway and I'm grubby I'll see if I can set to and get some of this job done. So here's the mighty beast. First thing you'll notice is there's no three point linkage. That's because these dirty great prongs stretch out and go right under the, and attach directly to the back axle of the tractor. So instead of lining up the three point linkage, I've got to line up the back axle. Um, and it's bloody heavy. Uh, you'll notice the modern electronics that control the way the arm and the head and everything works. You'll also notice that there's really not enough oil in the tank so I'm going to hitch it up and then probably think about taking off some oil pipes and getting them replaced and topping it up with oil that's if I can hitch it up so first of all I've got to get the old Massey out of the way get some of these plastic bags of rubbish out of the way and see what I can do. I might also have a go at just leveling up the leveling up the hedge trimmer at the moment because you're down there. See that square jack is slightly off the ground. Which means the thing isn't level. So you're you're working against yourself from the start. Anyway Let's see how it goes. Right, I'm just looking to see how far off level these are from the back axle.
Right, I've pretty much got one side and it's nearly there. The other side, not quite. So I'll fiddle a bit with the jack, see if I can line it up a bit better and then give it another shunt. it. Let's go and inspect. Yeah look, so you can see the you can see the big bar has engaged almost at the back of those metal clamps. You see this big thing here that comes over the bar and that's a good old-fashioned bit of spanner work needed now to to tighten that in against the back of the tractor, against the back axle. So, <laughs> phase one, done relatively successfully. That has taken longer than that on many occasions. So tune in for phase two. Right, this is the next fine adjustment tool needed to clamp that up to the back axles. Right, that'll do for now until I get the other side. Right. It's just about attached to the back axle now, after some time, tightening up the nuts. It's pretty much lunchtime, and also I've done my usual trick, which is I can't remember what I've done with my top link. It's somewhere around, but I do need that because although it mounts on the, to the back axle at the bottom, it requires a top link to hold the weight forward. And um, I've got pretty good at misplacing those lately. Hooray! The missing link. Uh, it is a bit like archaeology working on this place. I will see if I can get this on. And then we're moving in the right direction. That's moving rather nicely. Short walk around the yard and a pin found. Lovely one. Beautiful snug fit. So she's away there. Get it nice and tight. Ideally those metal jacks or stands that it's on they need to be off the ground just a shade so I can take the weight off them and get the pins out right that's it jacked and supported by the tractor the weight off both um, stands so final job is hydraulics remembering how they work because of course it's it's always a year ago. I've used the darn thing, so I can never, I can never remember what I did the last year. And the other thing is put this ruddy great oil pump, PTO oil pump, which drives the bulk of the actions on the thing, um, on there. So let's have a struggle with that. So now it's a case of trying to remember where the oil pipes go. So it's basically a main feed and a return so I'll hop over and see if I can get that done Oop, bump. right so this is the return which goes there this is the feed I think I've 
buddy. That spool there. Might be time to have a test fire and see what's going on. <laughs> I've narrowed it down to which lever I need to put into automatic and to do that relies on using a bit of string to tie it into position so I'll get on and do that and go on to the next phase take her out and fire it up. So the way it works is the constant pumping on my hydraulics, which I've made constant pumping by changing the flow of the oil pump, putting the, so it doesn't go to the top link, directing that oil flow through the pump to the spool services, and then opening a valve wide and keep it open so the spool is constantly pumping. That works, all of this stuff. The massive oil tank and PTO pump purely drives the flail, because that takes a lot of oil and gets pretty hot. done is these need a bit of sharpening so I need to get the grinder on those because they're a bit blunt it needs to be greased up it needs more oil in the tank and there's probably a hydraulic pipe that needs replacing because it's been weeping a bit of oil which is a bit grim oh and what I must do is just make sure now it's all moved that the big nuts that hold it jammed to the back axle are nice and tight because if they fall off bad things happen before i go any further i am going to take this oil pipe off because i know what will happen if i don't take it off i'll be tempted to use it with it on I'll spend 120 quid on oil and then that pipe will finally let go after 35 years and I'll lose all that oil all over the deck. Whereas if I take the oil pipe off, I know I can't use it and I'll have to get it replaced. Right, there's the offending article. You can see how much oil's been weeping out of the braiding there. And uh, 
it's because if you don't connect that pump up correctly, the pump twists with the weight force of the PTO and kinks this pipe. So it's uh, it can potentially wear out quicker than it should. Although I think this is probably an original and uh, it's also under terrific pressure. And this is the main pipe that drives the oil from the pump to the flail head. Uh, so the other thing is you don't really don't want these letting go under pressure because it squirts oil everywhere and it's a real mess. So one, one lunch time from work, I'll nip off and go to somewhere and get a new pipe made up and uh, attach it. But in the meantime, I'll park this one up out of the way and uh, complete part two when it's time to sharpen everything up. Afternoon. Uh, so second day of this weekend, I was working at Rothamsted on the farm this morning, continuing my duty, duty rotor. Right, so I'm on part two now of getting this thing together. If you remember, we took off the oil pipe, so I can't use the flails. Discovered the rear jack might need a service, but I've just brought it, but we did get the trimmer all running and mounted on the tractor so what I'm going to do today is have a bit of a go at sharpening the flail teeth or the flails just run a grinder along the edge just to make those edges good there are a few that have obviously caught a bit of granite or a piece of wire or a very thick bit of tree uh, so I shall just wet the edges on that and then um, grease it up and see if what oil I've got in stock for filling the oil tank I won't uh, put any oil in until I've put the new pipe on but just to see what I need to to buy to finish the setup and then maybe hedge trimming another weekend. That's them all sharpened, uh, but trimming is still a distant dream. Uh, I'll start greasing up the machine now. What usually will happen is you'll start greasing and the grease gun will run out of grease. 
so let's see how far we get. Well, that's amazing. The I must have put a new grease thing in not very long ago. Oh, I did. It was when I was greasing up the topper. On an earlier video. Right, so apart from that oil pipe, I think we're ready to go.